Smash, smash. Amazing. We have a massive one in my father's house that we got from. Uh, my name is Shannon Doherty. Um, I've been working in shops since I was 18 years old. I came to New York initially. Um, I went to school to study illustration, and I ended up falling more and more in love and in line with tattoos. And I think I started by going to a shop in the city. It was the first shop I stepped foot into in New York City. And I had all the lingo wrong. I was calling tattoo machines guns, and they corrected me very fast. And instead of being deterred by that or being like embarrassed or upset, I was a little embarrassed. I'm like, all right, well, I'm gonna find out more. My name is Erica Polanco, and I've been tattooing for 26 years. I was 16, mm -hmm. and I became homeless in Mexico. And I, a friend of a friend of my friends took me in, and he gave me, uh, you know, room and board in order for me to work for him, and uh, detail motorcycles, and paint motorcycles, and you know, he taught me how to do everything that I can on motorcycles. A lot of his clients would come in with like ta fresh tattoos that they got down the block, and they looked crazy. They looked like a kid drew them, and I'm like. That doesn't look like a panther. It looks like a wet black cat. <laughs> like, what's wrong with that? So, um, you know, they were like, oh, but you can do better. And I was like, I think I can. And I went to the market. I bought a little motor, put a guitar string on it, uh, bent the spoon, and started tattooing uh, like anything I could get my hands on people that walk in here that don't know that it's a female tattoo shop like a female based tattoo shop are actually really surprised when they walk in here and they're like hey I want a tattoo where's the guy and they're like oh what guy <laughs> it's only girls here <laughs> So Pakistan is not a Muslim governed country, but it is a Muslim populated country. So tattoos are not illegal there. As far as I know, there's one tattoo artist in Pakistan and I constantly joke if I went back there, I'd be the best tattoo artist in the country. My name is Sean Zayavzal. I'm Pakistani and American. I used to be a henna artist growing up and from doing henna, I naturally gravitated towards permanent tattoos. I started Ink Minx because I was working in several hyper-masculine shops and women would constantly come in and ask me, am I the tattoo artist? Can I get tattooed by you? I am Muslim and tattoos are typically taboo in Muslim culture. So a lot of conservative Jewish women and Muslim women come to me because they relate to that and they still want their tattoos. One out of six tattoo artists is a woman and more women than men in the United States are tattooed. So there is an imbalance there. There's not like a big story. Moonrise, uh, to me at least, is representative of like the moon being like the feminine, and um, the rise of that <laughs> in tattooing in, in our in our industry. So um, it's I think it sounds really beautiful, and I have like my own personal connection with the moon. Yeah, when she came to me with that name, I was 100% down. I grew up a certain way and <laughs> um, in a religious family that I didn't really. Feel I belong to, and the moon represents um, the witch and the feminine, and so I love that. My name is Julia Hayes. Um, I've been tattooing for just under three years. Um, I I guess I've been an illustrator for my entire life to some degree. Like I've I've always done art, um, and I worked in tattoo shops for a few years um, before I moved to New York. 
I talked to a um, tattoo artist who was visiting from Australia and um, we ended up spending like hours talking about like women and tattooing and, and just how the industry is still super like male dominated basically and um, kind of like accidentally convinced me that I wanted to tattoo <laughs> and so I got back to New York and um, the first thing I did was look for an apprenticeship. I don't even like necessarily think of it as an apprenticeship sometimes because I didn't really have a mentor. Just the entire dynamic of the shop was um, somewhat like volatile and definitely very like ego driven. There is a lot of um, just like really outdated practices and like ways of dealing with clients and, and just like I personally didn't feel comfortable and I saw a lot of my clients and the other tattooers clients not feeling comfortable and I f feel like that's a terrible way to be put into a position where you're having somebody like basically like you're paying someone to hurt you <laughs> like you want to be as comfortable as possible um and like be able to trust them and so um basically since leaving that shop i i worked at a few different places each one being progressively better um and mostly with women and I can't say like it's better to work with women or that women are like better at tattooing or anything like that, but my experience was that um, I felt like safer and less judged and I feel like it was more of um, like a collaborative sort of like helpful supportive environment and I wanted to create my own space where I could like ha have that same effect. I'm Kat and I started basically making art when I was very young. Um, I used to draw all over the walls and ruin the house. And um, <laughs> so pretty early on, I knew that I wanted to do something creative, but wasn't really sure what it would be. And basically, when I started, I worked for a shop that was um, male owned. It was a guy who worked in, he had a private studio and he opened up a public shop and I worked as a piercer there. and. Um, I had some, I had a good friends there, but again, it's kind of, it was kind of a crude environment and, um, <laughs> to say the least. And I, I didn't want to be involved then because of how, I guess, um, one way it was. He was just using his, his industry to take women in and, and have his way with them. And Basically, I watched that as like an 18 year old and thought, mm, this is not really, I have a boyfriend. This is not really what I want to be a part of. Not thinking, you know, like how extreme that was then. Um, but looking back now, it's definitely, it was like that in a lot of shops. It wasn't just the shop that I was at. And um, men thought they could do that. And they still think they can do that. And it's not, it's not okay. Historically, um, while men and women have both been part of tattooing, uh, it's very much so uh, male dominated, as are a lot of other industries. Now, the dynamic has shifted. There's a lot more women working in the industry. A lot of those things are because of the social fabric that's changing on a political scale. Like, people are a little bit more outspoken about how they feel. Um, now that I, what I've noticed is the benefit of social media calling out people that are essentially rapists or who have molested their clients or other female tattooers. So it's a new type of call out generation that is allowing people to open up either their own personal spaces, their own tattoo shops. Um, not necessarily always a good thing. A lot of people that are opening those shops don't necessarily reel from a whole lot of experience. They're just frustrated with the fabric that it is, but that doesn't mean that it's um, it's not wrong. You know, I was always taught to keep your head down, mind your business, and, and do your job. Uh, but at the same time, that doesn't mean that I wouldn't say anything if I saw something uh, that was a little off or out of character or unfair. Oh, I've had situations. <laughs> I had a, a coworker actually um, about to tattoo a, my cousin, oh, okay. and he started talking stuff. He didn't realize that that was my cousin. He was like, "Oh, I'm gonna be touching her butt. I'm gonna be doing this. I'm gonna be doing that." And I'm like, "Calm down. You know what I'm saying? That's a girl. That's a female. Just relax. Just do the tattoo and get out." And 
it became a situation with me and him because he he was like talking stuff to all our other co-workers and now you know i'm like even if she wasn't my cousin that's disrespectful on my entire body i've had had two female tattooers tattoo me but everyone else that's tattooed me is by a man and i will say this every one of those guys i believe were stand-up individuals they either had families um they never uh, put me in a situation where I was uncomfortable. They were just genuine people that wanted a tattoo and they were a lot of them were a little bit older of that like old-school mentality of mind your business do your work You know keep plugging ahead don't get involved in talking about other people or making them feel low or and I really appreciate that because if you're coming from that mindset you're tending to be a little bit more open to all orientations of people that come through your doors the pendulum swings both ways I've met people they are like, I feel more comfortable with a female tattooer and I would like to do this with you, X, Y, Z. Uh, and then I've also met people where I've been in the position where I've had clients that made me uncomfortable. They're coming to me because I'm female and they have like another agenda that can make it uncomfortable. 90% of what makes that for someone who's coming to you is how you treat them. You know how honest you are how upfront you are making them feel good like any shop you go into you should be able to comfortably sit there and let it fit like a glove we try and find a place for ourselves you know what i'm saying because even though uh we are welcome in in to a male shop um it doesn't always necessarily seem that way it doesn't always necessarily mean that you know even though uh, we can walk into a shop and get tattooed. Doesn't mean we have a, a bond or a connection with that person. This one client came in and her husband uh, has, had tried to um, kill her and stabbed her in her chest several times. She had long scars and uh, you know she wanted to you know get rid of that that feeling of looking at that on a daily basis. So she, we ended up putting up flowers and beautifying her scars instead of her staring at those scars now. And you know, it was a very emotional thing for her, you know. Um, so I was happy to have been a part of her healing process. Um, I think it's incredibly important for people to feel safe and respected. Um, it's. It's again, it's like a very intimate, like trusting sort of process. Um, and as I've been tattooing more over the years, I found that a lot of people also use this as like a healing process. Um, a lot of people are like reclaiming their bodies or otherwise like um, covering scars or like having getting memorial tattoos. Like there's so many different instances where people are using it um, for like the healing qualities, um, not just like the physical, like cathartic, like pain part. And I get people in here who didn't even expect to have that experience, but during or after will thank me profusely for being in a space where they feel comfortable that they can rest their eyes on plants or have calming music or be treated in a way where they're being told what's happening next or being asked consent for, you know, the next part of the process where most people, um, you know, have had the, ex the opposite experience in a tattoo shop where it's usually open and it's more clinical and it's less inviting and it's an in and out situation where they're just kind of trying to make money. Tattooing is such a powerful experience. It's powerful being tattooed. It could provide closure and motivation and healing and empowerment. My first tattoo was a symbol of Islam. I had just moved out of my parents' house on my 18th birthday and I went straight to the tattoo shop and I got the sun, uh, the star and moon. Um, the artist had no idea what it meant to me. I had been thinking about this tattoo for years and I really wanted to acknowledge my background, where I'd come from, and not forget who I am. I think inclusivity is going to be a new standard in the industry. I think the future of tattoo culture is global. In the United States, it's changing in small ways to include more people and stuff, but tattoo culture is large and prevalent. I think around the world, in countries where tattoos are typically taboo, tattooing is growing. 
and then we'll continue to grow. The only thing I ever really like to do is hope for the best. You know, goodwill upon other people. I hope that this shop has another 40, 50 years and beyond, you know, like it's been very good to me. It's been a very nurturing environment uh, and I want nothing but the best for everyone here. I can work at a lot of other places and, you know, may or may not do that, but having my own environment that I can create that, um, you know, I can invite other people in and we can share that and it becomes everyone's environment is really my long-term goal. Um, I've never felt this way about any, any career that I, or any job that I've ever had. And so it feels effortless, honestly, even though it's working constantly, <laughs> it feels like it's not work. This, this space is not, um, it's not about like this particular room, you know, it's not about this, like the name of the studio. Like it's just a vessel for us to do our work and that can happen anywhere in any sort of environment because we kind of create that, that environment where we are. I'm not trying to be the best artist in the world. I'm just trying to be the best part of me in this industry. Like give you everything that I have and always try to do better. You know what I'm saying? Um, as far as where I want to be, I don't want to be famous. I just want to be able to feed my cats, you know? <laughs> I really hope that that beaver's here for a very long time. You know what I'm saying? Because it, it's an awesome place to be. I've worked in a lot of different places. You know, I've even had my own shop, but honestly, it feels like home. A mature woman. No, it does not <laughs> say that. No, it doesn't. It does. What does it say about the mature woman? Usually the Queen of Cups appears seated on a throne wearing a crown and lovely garments. A beautiful woman, she exudes warmth, sensuality, and maternal caring. In a reading, the Queen may signify an actual person. When she does, it's usually a mature woman who is creative, nurturing, changeable, Intuitive, devoted as a wife or mother, and highly emotional. She is sometimes a drama queen. <laughs> Shut mm -hmm. up. <laughs> what are they talking about? The upright queen represents deep emotions, compassion, and caring. When she comes up, you're experiencing strong feelings about someone or something. She can also urge you to use your intuition or express your creativity. This card signifies a real person. She's nurturing and generous, a mother figure. Ruled by her heart, not her head. She's changeable and sometimes unreliable. Are you the mature woman? <laughs> or are you the mature woman? No, I'm definitely the mature woman. Uh -huh. I feel really fertile. <clears throat> you feel fertile? Mm -hmm. But you're not... Are you a drama queen? No. Not I'm the drama queen. Mm -hmm. She's I'm the emotional the ruling with the heart, with not the head. Well, one of the main keywords was intuition, which I feel like is the mix, maybe. Yeah, true. Did you read the... The Queen of Swords or whatever the fuck I got? Wands. Wands. Uh-uh. Yeah, it was kind of similar. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. Queens. 